Hello, good evening. Welcome to the programme. Uh, great uh, time to have a sporting chat Thursday evening. Uh, it's always very relaxed uh, here in the Sheffield Live studio. A couple of great guests for you this evening. We've got something old and something new. I'm sorry, Glyn, about the something old. <laughs> the something new, uh, the uh, biking boom, not least here in Sheffield and Yorkshire in particular. We've got the uh, team manager. Uh, of cycling Sheffield in the studio uh, this evening. It does strike me that uh, there's quite a cycling craze at the moment. I don't know if we can get our other guest uh, interested at all. I go back a long way with him, <laughs> <laughs> all the way to, well, Doncaster Rovers and Sheffield Wednesday, and he was always the guy, win, lose or draw, who would do an interview. He is uh, Glyn Snowden. Just before I uh, introduce him, uh, it's, it's, it's very chilly here in Sheffield this evening. It really, really is. <laughs> And I think it's only appropriate, you know, considering how cold it is in the, uh, in the area of the studio this evening. You don't mind, Jiglin? <laughs> What's all that about? You don't mind? <laughs> the wearing of gloves? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got you now, yeah. <laughs> I know where you're coming from now, sorry, right. I'll, well, yeah. If anybody yeah. else does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're this coming from. This is the from. guy, yeah. Glyn, um, this, is the, this is the guy that featured prominently on a Netflix yeah. documentary quite recently on Sunderland Football yes, Club, that's okay? True. That's true. Oh, Where yeah. you work with Simon Grayson and you were scouting. Anybody who hasn't seen it, try and look it up on YouTube. Or, better still, watch the <laughs> Netflix documentary. Well, you tell us what, what happened. You have this camera crew following you, okay? So yeah, we did. That night, yeah. And it, yeah. it, it, it was a mild night. It was lovely. Yeah. And then we went to watch this player. And, uh, this is Scunthorpe, right? Yes, Scunthorpe United, yeah. And he had gloves on. And I thought, gloves on? And, and it's, you know, a nice evening like today. I said, when he comes to Sunderland, I'll need two pairs on. It's that, it's that <laughs> cold up there on a summer's day. <laughs> Do you know, I think you said what everybody in your profession would have liked to have said. <laughs> um, you know, whenever I see uh, a player in o August, September, October, yeah. or late season wearing gloves, it, whether you, th you say it or not, you, you kind of question their character, don't you? Uh, I think society's changed, hasn't it, now? It's changed a lot. I mean, we, we wouldn't have even thought of, of having... I never wear them in the press box. I mean, I've never. I've, I've, I've had to borrow these from my wife, especially for... Some <laughs> <laughs> but it was short sleeves, short shorts as yeah. well. In them days, yeah. also, you just went out and that's a bit of DP on and you were warm. Yeah. Well, things are hotting up at Chesterfield. We could talk about that in a minute. I mean, Glenn, I mean, look, I, I, it normally takes me 10 or 15 minutes to research a guest. It took me about 20 for you <laughs> because you played for seven league clubs, including one in Scotland, Hearts. Yeah. You've coached at 11, I think, for the last wow. count. Early well, in your career, played for Doncaster, Sheffield Wednesday, Leeds, Hearts and Barnsley. And I'll, I'll read the list of coaches out later. I'm not even sure we've got time to <laughs> clubs you've coached. Meantime, Dave Coulson, welcome to the studio. For the very first time, Cycling Sheffield team manager. I mean, it's a recently uh, created team. And it kind of reflects the massive interest that guys like, uh, I suppose, Lance Armstrong going back, Chris Hoy, Bradley Wiggins have created in this sport everywhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, I think... As you, as you mentioned, 2012 was probably the, the real uh, period that escalated the cycling in Britain's consciousness as a, as a sport, and then that filters down as right down to kids just riding bikes in the street, you know. Mm. Um, and, and we're now enjoying, you know, unprecedented levels of participation. You know, the, the, the racing, the sporting part is, is, is probably more popular than it has ever been, but that's... Um, it's only a small part of people riding bikes, really. Mm, you know, and it's it's a good thing. You know, anybody riding a bike is a good thing. It's good for their health. If people are riding bikes to work, it's it's good for them. It's good for their employer. It's, the roads are less clogged up, so it's it's kind of win-win. You know, it's a lifestyle thing and also a, a sporting thing. Mm. Not, not least here in Yorkshire, where the terrain is particularly ch challenging. And 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 this year, I think you've got the World Championships and Tour de Yorkshire. Yeah, Tour de yeah. Yorkshire in May, yeah. early, early May, and then the Worlds in September. And that, that's a real coup, bringing yeah. the Worlds here. But yeah. um, as I was saying to to Glenn earlier, that um, I think Yorkshire has become synonymous with. Uh, road cycling now globally, you know, mm. outside Europe, uh, Yorkshire. That it, racing in Britain, it's, mm. it's Yorkshire. Yeah, is that partly to do with the terrain or the sudden interest of people uh, in, in it? I, I guess I, it's. I guess it's maybe largely down to 
Gary Verity, welcome to Yorkshire. Bring in yeah. the bring in the Tour de France here, and then the legacy of 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 that in 2014. Then getting the uh, Tour de Yorkshire uh, the following year on the road was was fantastic. Just right, we're having the Tour de Yorkshire mm. one year later. It's in there, really really high level race, and it's and it's embraced massively. Mm. I know that in um, in 2004 when the Tour de France 2014 when the Tour de France came here. Um, a lot of the riders that uh, I knew that were riding, when they got back to France, they said it felt flat. The atmosphere was a oh. come down compared to, you know, racing up here in Yorkshire. Really? And, oh. and all the, rider, all the riders uh, that ride the Tour of Yorkshire, they said it, it, it's phenomenal the way the county embraces the race. Oh. Um, so something to be proud of, you know, the yeah. people's attitude towards it. Have you signed him up yet? <laughs> 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 You're not keen, oh, are you? oh, I can't see me doing that, Al. No. They, they're fit. The, these lads are fit. Absolutely. Wow, the way they look after themselves. They probably put professional footballers. Oh, to shame, I think so. Yeah. You know, I mean, what, what they eat, what they, what they drink. You know, the hydration, the nutrition, the put inside themselves each day, every day. You know, it's through uh, true professionalism what what these boys do. Well, you've shown great endurance and stamina. To, you know, to be in the game as long as you have, <laughs> yeah. you know, and to have been around <laughs> as far and wide as you have, and still yeah. got that big smile on your face. Oh, I love, I you love remember it. Remember from years ago. Yeah, I, I love, I love the game. It's in you. It's a passion. It's like, like a medicine for me. I, I can't do without it. It's one of the great games uh, of the world. It's an addiction. I and mean, currently, uh, you're at Chesterfield, and yeah. uh, you know, since you teamed up there with uh, John Sheridan. There's been a definite move in the in the right direction. I think it's uh, eight league games, five wins and a and a draw. You must be well satisfied with that. But before we talk about the form and the turnaround there, linking up with John Sheridan, he's not somebody. I, obviously, you you knew him as a player. But yeah. Not worked for him before, had you? No, never. Uh, it was strange, to be fair, Alan. You know, because like I'm, I've been with Simon for the last ten years, probably. You know, at, at different clubs. Simon Grayson. Grayson this yeah. Is, yeah. And uh, you know we've, we've done quite well uh, working with each other, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're waiting uh, again to get jobs, and then Sam is doing a lot of media work. So, jump at the phone. Well, I, at first I saw it on TV that he'd left Carlisle, and I'm thinking he's left Carlisle. They're about fourth were, or fifth in the league. You were stunned. Yeah, like a lot of people. And were. I thought, what's happened there? Yeah. So I, I rung him in car, you know, day after, and I just says, what? What are you doing? I said, what do you mean? I said, you've left Carlisle, you're fourth and fifth in the league. He says, I know. He says, uh, I just couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. He says, because of what we're happening. So I said, right. So about three, four days later, maybe maybe more, Alan, he, he's giving me a call. He says, look, I'm going into a, a club. He says, and uh, do you fancy coming? And I says, where, where are you going? And he went, Chesterfield. And I looked at the table and I says, now I think you are, Barmy. You're going to Chesterfield. You're leaving Carlisle. Are you, are you coming here? So he went, yeah. <laughs> I said, well, I said, well, you, my next question is going to sound even daft to you. Do you want to come and help me out? You know, until Simon gets a job, you can go back with him. I said, look, I'll, I'll give Simon a ring, let him know, you know, out of courtesy, that you've asked me to do that. So I get him a call, rang a few people up as well, just said what they thought. And, you know, I always get advice, even though you've been in the game that long. It's nice to get advice from other people who's in the game, been in the game, and also with the manager that I've worked with for the last 10 years. So I said, look, keep keep yourself going. Go and, go and do it. Uh, get yourself in. So, yeah. So from that day, I, I said yes, and I've thoroughly enjoyed every second, every minute to, of it, and every day with uh, with John. Yeah, and he's really surprised me. Uh, how? Because I knew him as a player. Yeah. So as a player, I was thinking, no way, that 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 man will ever be a manager one day. You know what I mean? He he couldn't. But then. Years later, you see that he has managed, and even though, you, and he's got good results with, you know, with, with clubs that is where he's been. He's been at Chesterfield before, Oldham, you know, Carlisle, Newport, Plymouth, got them out, out the mire. And uh, now working with him, I, I can understand and see why. And I, I've really changed my mind on, on how he, he sees the game well, you know, he understands it and uh, sees problems early. The man management side of him is very good. You were roommates, weren't you? At Leeds, yes. At Leeds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, that's what I'm I, saying. I was a sensible one. And, oh, and, I'm going to say it right, pair of scallywags. Oh no, I, I was fine. I don't mean I was one of those that I like to prepare everything right, and also see, be up watching telly and till eleven or twelve. I like to be lights out and ready for uh, the game next day if we you stayed were away. You a professional one. Yeah. And of course, he'd uh, he'd what, have a couple of glasses of Coca-Cola and then go to bed finally. At no, he'd, he'd have his coffee and tea. Have to, make, him, and have tea. to make his coffee or a cup of tea for him, yeah. and then but he'd, he'd have his telly on. Likes to watch telly for uh, mm. quite a few uh, hours. 
You know, the word, I uh, use the word scallywag. I, I remember Ron Atkinson describing John Sheridan yes. as a scallywag. Did he? Yeah. And, and that's why, I, you know, from the outside looking in, yeah. uh, I, I also thought the same. Yeah. I thought, you know, he's going to be quite a manager. I know. Is Poacher turned gamekeeper, perhaps? Oh, I is that uh, what it is? Honestly, yeah. He's, he's really stung me on, on how he works and, and on a, in a good way. And I mm. think, yeah. I'm very impressed with him, very impressed. OK, do you think it's a, a long-lasting partnership? Because you mentioned Simon Grayson and your loyalty to him, and yeah. you worked with him at previous clubs, latterly Sunderland. Um, how does that work then from from here on? Yeah, it just depends on what, what uh, Simon's looking to do. How, if, you know, if he wants to get into a club early enough, or if he's leaving it for a few more you know, months or a year, you know, he wants to, like I say, he's enjoying his media stuff at the moment, and then... Uh, Simon will give me a call and probably see where we go from there. But uh, at the meantime, and at the moment, like I say, I'm, I'm enjoying it with John and, mm. uh, you know, stay there with him as, as long as he wants me there with him as well. Well, you're not working with Simon at the moment, but I am on a regular basis for yeah. TalkSport. He was <laughs> alongside me at the Sheffield Derby. That's right, uh, yeah. Commentator for TalkSport 2 the other night, and he, he's alongside me at Sir Bramall Lane again on uh, Saturday. Yes, he mentioned it. I spoke to him the other day. And Did he you? He's there. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. And he comes across very well. He Alan, does indeed, yeah. On, uh, on the radio station, on, on the media, on TV, yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. Um, cycling comes across well on TV. Uh, it has to be in order to, to, to really sell itself, doesn't it? Um, and whereas I suppose the British public only took an interest in like the milk race, whatever, Tour de France, you know, for, for years and years, all of a sudden, you know, probably because of Olympic success, do you think it is? It's become a really popular TV sport. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, there is an argument that. You know, if you're watching the Tour de France and the stage on a given day might be five hours long, if you're not that familiar with bike racing, it can look a little bit boring because a lot of what's going on is very subtle. Mm. Um, but there is a huge appetite for watching bike racing now. You know, Eurosport cover an, Im uh, an immense amount of racing. And for the last two years, there are races on Eurosport now that most of the cycling watching public have never heard of the big race in Europe or you know uh, far-flung corners of the world but you know yeah. there's so many races on whereas ordinarily it'd be the biggest one-day races then the three Grand Tours Italy France Spain the world champs but now there's this yeah it, it kind of feels like it's it's very close to sort of mainstream sport you yeah. know which I've been in the sport for forever really and it's it's kind of strange at times to see where it what where it is now, when I've come from a, a time and a background where you know it's, it was for weirdos in this country. It was this this little <laughs> yeah. marginalised yeah. sport, and you know if you're any good, you 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 got to go to Europe and make it, which is still true to to some extent. But it, it was a sort of um, not a niche sport, but but the public's interest wasn't. Um, wasn't anything like as, as broad as it is now. Where does Cycling Sheffield stand in the rankings? Would you um, say? I'd say we, we're probably in the top 12 teams in, in the UK. There's six teams that on paper are bigger than us. They've got a bigger budget than us. Um, they're registered at a different level. I won't go into detail. But we regularly race against those teams and you know go toe to toe with them week in, week out. Mm. Um, the season's just got underway again, isn't it, for you? Yeah. Yeah. So when's your next event? Um, racing on Saturday uh, down near North Ants, and then Sunday uh, a little bit southwest of that. So yeah. up and down Sound the country. a bit vague. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I hope you get to these places. <laughs> a lot of the, ra uh, the, the, the... Because the level we race at, they might... in. On any given day, there might only be one race in the country at that level. Mm. Um, so a lot of them, they're, they're the same races year in, year out, and you kind of forget where they actually are. You just, you put the, you, you know when in your mind, and you just, yeah, you just get on the M1, and, yeah. and, and now sat now yeah. takes away anything yeah. you need it to do. But Yeah, it does yeah. indeed. Yeah, apart, apart from getting well, in apart here from getting here, that's <laughs> totally right. Yeah. Yeah, right, Alan, you're right. right. <laughs> We have to send out a search party. Yeah, right. One man search party, me. <laughs> what, to be fair, I remember you know, about watching uh, cycling in 90, I think it was 97, 98, we were at Scarborough, me, me and my brother then, yeah. and there were a physio there called John Murray, right. cycling mad, honestly. Yeah. And he used to 
tape it. So we were saying, you, you're taping cycling? He's going, yeah, I said, it's great. I said, what, how many hours? And it, like I said, yeah, five, yeah. five hours a day. And he'd tape every Would day it? this. So our kid says, <laughs> who's going to win it then? So yeah, yeah. Pa Pantini was it? Pantana. 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 Yeah. That was the yeah, name. Ni 98 Tour de France. Yeah. You know, more, you know more about it so, <laughs> than you saw. Only because he had a bet. So yeah. he says to John, will he? Pantana, will he win it? He went, yeah, honestly, he will. Yeah. So he's put a bet on him. So after about two days, he's nowhere in sight. So he's gone to, to what's his grin? You and your Pantana. He said, he's nowhere in sight. It's about 80 odd. He went, wait, well, it goes to Hills. He said, then yeah. you'll see. So anyway, he, he, right, he, he, he ended yeah. up winning it. Yeah, right. Yeah. You said you, your kid, you weren't referring to Ian there, were you? Yes, yeah, sorry. Ian, yeah, Ian, brother Ian, Ian, yeah. You know, a great player. You two yeah. at Doncaster, you know, back in 77 to 85 or around about that, that era. Let's yeah. bring it right up to date. We've got loads of time, by the way, in part two as well. Uh, Sheffield teams, Sheffield Derby, did you have the misfortune to, to watch that at all uh, on Monday? No, not really, no, I oh, had, well, uh, well, had well, something well. on, so yeah, but yeah. I, I heard it off uh, John, because John won at the game, John he, he went there live, yeah, and he would tell me that, uh, yeah, he won a classic. Right, that's But, but you get them, don't you? You get them games, you know what I mean? You, you, they get built up and built up, I mean, you get Man United, Liverpool, uh, that could end up like stalemate, and the you know the the, the Merseyside derby also was a disappointment, you know, a yeah. couple of days before, uh, mm. and so it can happen. Although it's three times in a row now, yeah, three times in a row. Mm. Sheffield Wednesday, though, on the turn. And how well do you know Steve Steve Bruce, who is unbeaten still? Yeah, I've known him uh, through, through the circuit and, and what have you, and same with Aggers, uh, played it against Aggers as well. So yeah. they've, they've done a great job, fantastic job. You know, they've turned it round there and. Uh, it'd be nice to see that place full soon and uh, oh, hopefully up uh, into the next it certainly next would. league. I'm trying to think, uh, you, you were a, a Billy Bremner protege, weren't you, mm. at, uh, at Doncaster? Yes. You know, he was the one that brought you through and yeah. then it would have been Howard Wilkinson that, that brought you to Hillsborough. Hillsborough yeah. mm. You know, the, the different, uh, I know you've got great respect, respect for both, mm. differences between those two oh, and what you learn from Completely, those two? yeah, chalk and cheese, uh, Alan. I mean, yeah. the gaffer, we still call him gaffer, but like he's, God bless him, uh, he, he were like, you know, a man manager. You, you, you'd do anything for him, you'd run through a brick wall if it's a, you know, run through that wall for me. You, you would, you'd do it. Mm. Uh, you know, he, he knew a play, he knew what, how, you, how he wanted to play. And it was great because, you know, you, you were working for a legend from Leeds United, you remember what he used to do, uh, the captain of Leeds United, you yes. know, and what, what he did for that club. And to play under him and what, you know, you just listened to every little thing he did, but we, we could play one touch, two touch, there were a few of us that could do that and that's what he, he were looking for. You know, everything was a five aside, every little thing, but you had to win. He wanted you to win at everything, yeah. uh, no matter what. And then we Howard, he, he were ahead of his time. What, what a great coach. Very, very good coach. He, when you went out there, you knew who you were playing against, what his strengths, weaknesses were, what what the units were, you know, defensively, midfield players, and then as a team. So I, I would worry ahead of his time, you know, and okay, so people say, you know, you're out there, eh, just practicing and set plays, but it was part of the game, and I think we had a great season. We finished fourth, where we couldn't win to Europe because the ISIL Stadium. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's, that was credit to Howard and his staff, coaching staff as well. And where do you think John Sheridan's made your influences were I mean he played briefly for Howard at uh, Leeds but then Ron Atkinson perhaps the best mm. time of his career at Hillsborough is that the way he tries to manage and like Ron did in some ways I think uh, he's got his own philosophy to be fair yeah. Alan John you know yeah. when he's uh, he, 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 wants to, he wants to play yeah. yeah yeah probably style of football sorry yes he does he does want to play you know but uh, he, he has got his own way of playing you know he wants players to get forward and create and you know look good so we're not defending as much but yeah, I think, yeah, probably Ron Atkinson would be, be the one, because he played under Billy as well. Yeah. Uh, and like I say, an under hour, but yeah, I would say he'd be, the, he'd be the one. We're talking part two about good cop, bad cop, because it's a good partnership, you know. Uh, I think anybody who's, who remembers John Sheridan's first spell at Chesterfield, they've been a bit surprised how laid back he's been <laughs> in, the, in this spell so far. <laughs> Uh, we'll know that he can hit the roof occasionally <laughs> yeah. if needed. Whereas you, 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 you seldom have a smile off your face, so... Uh, You're the good cop then, yeah. Well, so, yeah, most of the times, most of the time, I can I can uh, be a bad cop when it when it does go uh, can it? a bit patient. Can yeah, it? oh yeah, yeah. I think you, you know to... you find that hard to believe. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but uh, the, right. it's, it's All the, the odd effective. time. Yeah. Five seconds to the break. God, that twenty minutes has gone. There's twenty-five minutes to come in part two. Do we join us with these two? See you there.